all the people out here in the room are individuals. Every one of you is an individual person. You have your own name, your own identity, but you have something more than that. Your cells know you and have your brand on them, and nobody else has that brand. If I take your cells and put it into the person sitting next to you, what's going to happen to those cells? They'll be rejected by the immune system of the recipient. For what reason? They're called not self. So all of a sudden they say, where's the self? What is the self? What makes you, you and the person next to you not you? Protein, so I'm going to get to it. I use two cells, Bruce's and Margaret's. I use two liver cells because 99% of the cell is liver in function. 99% of the cell is exactly the same as Margaret and Bruce. They're both the same. Liver cells do the same thing. Liver enzymes in me would be the same as liver enzymes in Margaret. Same thing. I know the nuclei are different because we have different genes, but I also told you this. I could throw the nuclei out of the cell and the cell's still going to have a life. So I'm not going to count them in this story right now. What I'm going to do is remove the color from the picture, leaving behind the color where the two cells differ from each other, where the identity is found. Where is it that makes us unique? And I remove the color. Can you see where the colors are left? They're in the membrane. And biologists even call some of these self-receptors. What are receptors? Receivers. What are self-receptors? Receivers of self. And why is this relevant? If I take my self-receptors off my cell, I take an enzyme and cut off these yellow receptors, you know what happens? My cell is generic. I can implant it in any human, it will never be rejected. I can implant it to a mouse, it won't be rejected. There's no identity to it. So I take my generic no identity cell, my cell, and I take Margaret's receptors off of her cell and put it onto my cell. And so I have my cell with Margaret's receptors. If I put that cell back in my body, what's going to happen? It'll be rejected, not self. If I take my cell with her receptors and put it into her body, what's going to happen? It's accepted. I transfer ownership by just transferring the antennas. Now you might think, well, these antennas are the self. The fact is, antennas are antennas. They are receivers of a signal so that your antennas complement a signal out here in the environment. Why would I say that? Because the receptors are reading the external environment. They're not reading the internal environment. So why is that relevant? Because your identity, these receptors on the surface, are reading an environmental signal that's unique to you. And if I take that signal and transfer it to somebody else's cell, then that cell becomes your cell because that signal is going to control the cell. The signals that come in from the outside give it the identity. And the relevance about that is that, let's just say, I'll start, I'll start with this first, give you another, another story about it. If I take your receptors and I put it on an embryo and I let the embryo develop with those receptors, who is that individual? It's you. But did I say, was it a male cell or a female cell? Did I say it was a white human or a black human? Well, that wasn't relevant. The identity and the body are two different things. One controls the body. What does this mean? It says that in a future date, if an embryo shows up and just happens to have the same set of receptors on its surface that you express now, you're back online again. That you've never died. What do you mean I never died? Well, I'll give you an example. As of late, because of the large number of transplant operations, heart-lung combinations, when people receive heart-lungs from other people, they don't just receive the organ, they begin to acquire the character of the person who donated the organ. Here's a, a fact that's so amazing. A young girl got murdered. Her heart was transferred to another person. That other person was able to identify the murderer for the police. It lived and knows. What was the point? You'd say, oh, the cells are carrying the memory. I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you a biologist. The brain is cells that membrane. It does not have the awareness capacity to distinguish chicken McNuggets and beer from anything else in the world. It doesn't do that. The memory is not in the cell. The memory is in the field. We are a broadcast. This is a television set. We have antennas. When the picture tube breaks on your television, what do you say about the TV? The TV is dead. 
Yeah, TV dead, but did the broadcast stop? No. Well, how can you tell that? You get another TV set, you plug it in, you turn it on, you do one other thing. What do you do? Tune it to the station. And when you hit that frequency, boom, it's back on again. That we are immortal. We don't even live in this system. This is a system for us to come into and then live out a life. And then you might say, well, Bruce, which I ask my own self, I say, Bruce, if I live out there, then why live in here? What's the, why this? And my cells gave me an answer. And my cells said to me this, Bruce, if you're just a spirit, what does chocolate taste like? What does a sunset look like? What does being in love feel like? Why is that relevant? The answer is, it's the cells that take that environmental information and convert it into an awareness that I can understand. That the real world out here is converted into electromagnetic vibrations. I'm reading the energy. I'm not reading the chemistry. I'm not physically seeing the light. I'm reading the energy of that. So my physical body is a device to sense the world. It's a device to come in here to create a world. That if anybody has the fondest idea of a heaven and they're looking elsewhere, I think it's a great mistake. Because your opportunity was to come here to create what you thought you would create in heaven. And because it looks like hell, that's because you bought other people's creations. And that you have the opportunity to take over your own life and create your own life. And I didn't know that as a cellular biologist who was teaching biochemistry and genes. But when I owned it, and I caught a hold of those beliefs that I acquired in the first few years, the, limitating, the limiting beliefs. The one that said you can't heal yourself. The one that said you can't do this, you're not smart enough, you're not good enough, whatever those things are, we all heard, and then we become. If you eliminate those and have a blank slate and create what you want, you can create anything on this planet, including that dream you thought heaven was. It's your dream, you can create it here. And the lesson is, we let go of this physical reality and own who you really are. Who are you? Well, the simple reality is this. You know those receptors? Let's say that they're like, uh, let's say the membrane's opaque. Let's say the membrane is opaque, nothing gets in. So what color is on the inside if nothing gets in? Black. But now I say, my self-receptors are yellow, so it's like wearing a yellow sunglasses. Margaret's self-receptors over there are red. She's wearing a red sunglasses. And the light can come through the membrane, so what color is on the inside of mine? And on her is red. And what's the point? Where did the color come from? Where did the color come from? From out here. All that is. And what does it represent? I am just a narrow frequency of the whole white light. You are a narrow frequency of the white light. You are a narrow frequency of the white light. Every one of you. What does it mean? To me as a biologist, it means this. When people talk about the white light coming back to the planet, they generally envision some person like a Jesus coming back. I think that's the biggest error of all time. The white light is here. The white light is when you put all of the frequencies together, you have white light. If you remove one solitary single frequency from the white light, you do not have white light. When we take a person and say this person doesn't fit and doesn't belong, and you throw them out, you cannot have white light. The biggest lesson is to find out we are one living organism called humanity. We are all the cells in that organism, that every human is a cell in that organism, but their educations are not correct. And it's readjusting the education and getting, uh, letting go of all the history in the past that made limitations and self-sabotaging beliefs. It's forgiving and letting go, and starting with a white blank page saying, what do you want from here on, not who did what to who back then? And this from a biologist who didn't know a damn thing about life until this understanding of the membrane hit me. And the reality is, I, I sit here in awe. Every day I wake up in awe to be on this planet. And if you're not seeing that, then it's time for readjusting the glasses. It's time to see it again. Because all of you, the person sitting next to you, the person sitting behind you, are part of this white light. And as a biologist, all I can say is, man, we have really wasted a lot of time. And yet the heaven is when we walk out this door, it's available to you right now. 
Thank you very much for your listening. I appreciate